there's an uneasiness growing within today's parents. Questions arise around what our kids are being taught, exposed to, and influenced by. Thankfully, a fully engaged, well-informed parent is a powerful thing. And that's why I support Answers in Genesis, and I would recommend you do as well, because it's important to remember that the battle for our kids' minds isn't one in the courts or the classrooms. It's one from the safety and comfort of our own home. So be the difference our kids need and visit www.answers.gift today. You're about to listen to a podcast full of wonder, excitement, and discovery. It's time for an adventure through Odyssey. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Adventures Through Odyssey podcast, Odyssey Revisited. I'm Will here with John. I'd like to kick off things. This is the first episode we've recorded since the uh, episode about Isaac uh, and Jacob or whoever. Who sacrificed the son on the mountain? I don't remember. Uh, it was Abraham, Abraham sacrificing Isaac. I thought you were joking for a second. Yeah. So forgetting I mean, your biblical patriarchs. Uh, this is what growing up with him was like, people. Except he had a giant stick. Hmm. I had this big dog walking stick. It was like a wooden stick with like a wood like a card wooden dog head on the <laughs> end that you're supposed to use for hiking. Sometimes I would just chase him around with it, you know? And sometimes if I got my biblical patriarch wrong, he'd wave it in my face. <laughs> hey, you gotta learn somehow, Will. And I'd like to thank those people for just pointing us out that, yes, that is definitely an interpretation where, because he said, we'll be back, or the equivalent of it in the language of that time, people think, oh, he knew God was going to spare his son. Which I think could also just be he didn't want to freak anybody out. But anyway. Yeah, and I, I think we I think we mentioned that it may be, like, I was like, is this an interpretation? It's just I've gone through, like going to a private Christian grade school and high school. And then I went to a Christian college and I've, I like, I read the Bible and I read several like, you know, Christian books every year. And I've just never heard that interpretation. So it's like, I'm like, I'm not against it. I was just like, is this a thing? So thank you for people who reached out. Cause now I know it's a thing. Maybe I'll, I'll look it up more, but yeah. I've just never heard that version of it. Yes. All right. Moving on to our first episode, The Visitors. The Barkley family finds a family huddling in their shed and are uncomfortable with them staying. After the family has left, the Barkleys realize they have made a big mistake and go looking for them. I do think as a sequel to last year's Christmas episode and they bring it up, it's very good. Yes. You know, I, I think it, they, cause it hits like we, like everyone sh gave to us and we weren't willing to give to these people. It, yes. So I think that works really well. Now, this is also, we're getting to some of, I guess I shouldn't say magical realism, like spiritual realism sort of stuff. Like the implication, I mean, they have the like Malachi's message later on, but that like actual physical, like angels are appearing in Odyssey. Yes. Okay. Which I'm so I'm not saying can't happen, but you know, right. I actually did some digging. I was wondering if maybe they based this episode off a real event or a family met a poorer family, asked them to leave, but then wanted them to come back, but couldn't find them and then met somebody else. So it was like, God, so, so essentially, an event like a, a some event that happens somewhere. Well, I was right. I was just curious. Is this based on a true story? No, it is not. From what we can tell, I I guess here's my thing. I like it. I actually I don't mind having these elements. I think it's interesting when Christian media uses elements like that and focuses on some of these spiritual aspects i think it's just an interesting choice because odyssey 99.9 percent .9 of the time doesn't like talk about that stuff you know like doesn't like talk about like spirit uh, this isn't spiritual warfare but talk about like that as a topic whether you believe it or not it doesn't talk about now here's a question and this is totally off topic would odyssey ever do an episode about speaking in tongues. That's like a good prophecy or like prophecy. I feel like for some denominations of Christianity, that is such a no go. And I think especially, if, I'm not going to guess who listens to Odyssey, but I feel like 
the people who listen to Odyssey would maybe lean a little more towards that's a no no. Yeah, I would I would think so too. I mean, and so maybe I actually like this if you're trying to get some of that spirituality elements in. I don't think that's necessarily what they're doing here. I don't right. think really that's what it's doing at all. It's just it's interesting when they do it because it is striking that like because it's not just like they go and find another family and take them in. So it's like ambiguous. It's pretty clear by the end where it's like there they are. And then they like find And I mean, maybe it's like they saw the, a different like wrong family and like like Jimmy saw the wrong family and like they ran after the wrong family. And they're just like, oh, you're not supposed to think it's angels or like a spiritual like thing. Right. But it is a little odd. Yes. So I think. I do think a lot of times kid shows tend to have slightly break the rules of the universe Halloween and Christmas episodes. So I'm more than okay to just kind of roll with this is a Christmas episode in the sense that we're not saying this isn't a real thing that happens to people, but we're going to lean a little more into, right, the ghost, spiritual, angel aspect. I do yeah. maybe wish there was a, they talked about that a little more. Yeah. Like, I mean, they talk about a little bit in Malachi's message. Yes. Which presents a very interesting idea of angels, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I think that's done very well. I will say, is, isn't this the first episode that was translated into Spanish? Yes, it was. As Los Visitoros. That's probably not right. And now someone's going to send me a very angry email. Thank you for your attempt at pronunciation, Will. <laughs> um, but... Uh, it, it's i guess it's because it's christmas right it's like a it's a good christmas episode it's it is i guess it's a weird jumping off point in the fact that they reference a later episode and probably like 90 percent of odyssey or more doesn't reference prior episodes yes to that extent like explicitly it's probably like more than that where they don't explicitly reference like a particular event that's happened Ooh. Yes, and I get that's to tie it into it. And it, again, you're right; it does make it a good sequel. And on its own, it's a great episode. But, uh, maybe a discussion guide would have helped. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but here's the question: How well has this episode aged? One, I mean, obviously the helicopter toy will be replaced by a drone. We all know that. Um, yeah. I guess well, I just was it a was it a helicopter? Or I thought it was a racing, like a really fast car. I thought it was an airplane. <laughs> You may be... I can't remember. I'm checking Hold on. The... Cashing the buggy. Remote oh. control dune buggy. Oh. That, never... Now, let's say that that is totally like an 80s. Right. And actually, that makes a little more sense now that I think about it. Yeah, I would be like, would they give a kid like... like did they have flying helicopters in the 80s? They probably did to some extent, but... So so here's what I mean. This is still a very good episode with a very good message. If you found a family camped out in your shed today, would you still let them in your house? I I okay, I'll I'll agree with you in that. I think the whole landscape of everything is just very different. Right. I I think probably an odyssey. I mean like I think it does depend on where you live in the country. Yes. I do think small town America, some of that stuff is a little, I think that stuff still exists there, but it's just like not even, it's not as like perceived as like being as much of an issue. I think the thing though, and probably part of the reason they did it is they had kids. Right. Like it was, it, like they had the kid. Yeah. The baby. You yeah. know, the baby. And so I think the idea is like, well, what are they going to do with the baby? Right. Like, like. It's like a weird situation, you know? Yeah, and I know, I don't want to be that guy who says this episode has a bad message. I and I, This might have been a late 80s, early 90s thing. I don't get why they shoved them off on wit when a homeless shelter would definitely be open. Yeah, it feels like that was like a moral thing in their heads where they're like, oh, we don't want to send them to a homeless shelter. <gasps> Let's send them to wit. Whose grandkids like, are in town. Right, it's almost like wit, like, 
I, I actually get the their mindset to like ease the guilt off of them to be like we're not saying it's a homeless shelter. We have someone we know who can way better take care of them. Right. You know. Right, but again, I think it's a good lesson that are we doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do or the right thing because we feel guilty that we didn't do the right thing with somebody earlier. Right, that like this generosity generosity should really come from the heart. Yes. Yeah, so I like that the family doesn't reveal so like I like the family doesn't reveal themselves until they pray about it. Yeah. I think that's I think that right. I think that's a really good message and one I think that in a lot of cases another show may just say like oh we go we go going back and like we got them and it's like everything's good and not like address the fact it's like okay so you're doing it of a guilt right so i i love that about it now a note on the trivia page here this is the only instance of odyssey having some kind of slum area an earlier instance was foster creek and later oswald heights it's possible this area was improved later in the series now this is true yeah because let me just say it, Odyssey is like always the nice, rich town, and then they have to go to the slums of Connellsville or Oswald yeah. Heights. <laughs> it is funny because, right, they want to keep Odyssey as this idyllic town where they can do these certain types of stories. But then, like, if they need it to be more of, like, a city or, like, something of, like, a more, like, not, like, safe area, they, like, have to choose somewhere distinctly different. Yes, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I'm not saying they need to address it, but it would be interesting if they ever did an episode about the economic disparity of Odyssey and the other towns. I I I think Odyssey... I would applaud Odyssey if they did something about economic disparity. But I after their tithing episode, I don't know how much good many uh, episodes involving money would necessarily turn up. And then also the Lawn Wayne episode got, got... People claimed it was communism. So That's I feel true. Like there's a lot. I think there's a lot of issues. Oh there. yeah, the Barkley family ski vacation. The Barkleys go skiing. Donna develops a crush on her instructor, and George comes to grips with his daughter growing up. You know, not as good as the last vacation episodes. Yes. It's funny to me. Don't they reference? Okay, have we talked about the staycation? Yes, we have. They reference it in that episode. Yeah, crazy to me that they, like, decide, like, oh, we're gonna reference this episode, like, six months away. Yes. Or maybe it was just something they dropped as a reference for why they couldn't go, but they decided, hey, let's write that episode. That could be fun. Uh, yeah, like, I, it's probably, like, a last-minute thing. Like, maybe they had written, just written this episode... After, like and they were about to record. And it's like, oh, throw in a line about like the ski vacation later. Oh, that's possible too. So you know, before we, oh, go ahead. No, uh, you go ahead. I was gonna say before we dive into the meat of this episode. So is the homeless family they met just chilling at their house while they're on vacation? Well, so I saw the. I, I guess these episodes did air two weeks apart, um, which is a potential issue. However, I, I, the implication they said was, we just, like, everything's closed. It's like, we know, like, they, they kind of set it up, like, these characters aren't going to be here long term. They basically set up, like, we just don't have anywhere to go on Christmas because everything's closed. Like, we can't get anywhere. Right. Which is a little convenient. Well, like, here's the, back to that episode. Well, here's the one thing. It was 89. So things were more consistently closed during Christmas. No, 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 not, not it's convenient. Things were closed at Christmas. Convenient that the, it's like, oh, well, like we're like after Christmas and after the holidays, everything will be fine. <laughs> right. And we can leave, uh, you know? Yeah, that's true. I'm saying that's convenient. Now, I think okay. presumably this is probably supposed to be like maybe like after New Year's Eve, like like you maybe you have like a week between like New Year's and like school starting or like during like another oh. winter break or something. Yes. I, maybe, I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, maybe they ahead. send them to wit justifiably this time. Right, or maybe it was one of those Christmas vacations where Christmas was really early in the break, so they don't go back till like a week after New Year's. 
That's what I'm wondering. And I would guess it's that. So anyway, not a big deal to the actual episode. So I forgot how much of this episode is the crush. I thought Jimmy had some sub- side plot about the bunny hill or something. No, the the plot is the crush. Yes. Which, it's fine. I think it's good. It's not a bad episode by any means. It's, again, a little bit of a generic sort of story, like kids' story. Yes. It does feel like an episode where it's really, like, connects on a more, like, parental level versus, like, a kid's level. Yes, but here's the problem. Now, I don't have kids, but da- Dad Barkley, George Barkley saying, Dad I'm gonna- Barkley. Sorry, I couldn't think of his name. I'm going to take my daughter on a date. I just think of that Arrested Development episode. To be... <laughs> well, not 8 to 12. <laughs> um... But George Barkley has always been portrayed a little bit that way with Donna. Like, when he becomes a pastor, and there's a whole episode where he keeps sharing, like, really embarrassing stories. Like, not even, like, childhood stories, but stuff from, like, last week. Like, last week, my daughter told me that she liked this boy, who also, and, like, she he didn't say it, but, like, also went to the church. And I'm just like, oh. Right. What, what I'm saying is, that is a very late 80s, early 90s focus on the family, daddy-daughter date dance kind of thing. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like a very, like, daddy-daughter dance sort of thing, which are still things. Right, like, but our I youth group did like them. Less. But our youth group did them, but they were not coded with, do this instead of going to a dance with a boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, protect your purity, that sort of thing. It was just a fun thing we did. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it, it's... It's a fine episode. I just don't know. Like, it's weird because, like, you know, the age range for Odyssey, as I just said, is 8 to 12. I think 8 to 12 is kind of before. So I guess, like, their ideas, like, get this idea about, like, relationships and your connection to your, like, parents before they actually start having romantic feelings for people. But it does, right. it's just, I don't know. It hit. It, it's also hard because it's, like, clearly, like, and I think it makes sense because I think Odyssey writers, like, especially yeah. then, probably more male. Yes. That, like, it's much more, like, the dad-daughter relationship when Odyssey's rarely had, like, a big focus on, like, a mother-son relationship. I mean, Zachary and his mom a little bit, but yeah, I, I know I was actually going to say, that's, like, the one mother-son relationship I can really think of, but I think that's because the father's dead. Like, I'm well, not trying to say that in a bad way, but, like... It's all right. I mean, I think there's other things about it that makes it good, but there's not really like episodes about like the son having to like, you know, the mother losing conne- as much connection with her son. I'm sure there's some episode in Odyssey that may reference that, but like, right. it's, it's not nearly as like reoccurring of a thing. And, I, right. and I'm thinking of like Spider Verse trailer just dropped. That's a whole like theme in that trailer. Yes. And yeah, I was gonna, like, it's kind of oh. surprising to me Odyssey right. hasn't had a more focus on that yeah and I was going to say th- this will, is something we'll come up to Odyssey really likes to lean into the dads protect your daughter's purity things but then just kind of don't let the guys have to deal with that you know double standard which we'll definitely talk about maybe we'll bring a woman on for that one oh um, uh, let me tell you not like administratively but it's funny at my undergrad there is some real funny like there was a whole controversy I'm not even going to go into. Or maybe I should. I don't know. It involved yoga pants at the school. And I'm not going to get too deep into it. But it was basically, like, only calling out women for, like, the effect it has on men. And, like, it just did not even, like... Not that This was someone posting on a random, like, bulletin board at the school. Like, their thesis on this. Oh and my it was, goodness. like... They, yeah, it, it was bad. They basically, like, talked about, like, women are horrible for doing this. Like, it just tempts men. And then it's like, but you all, like, the men, all, like, more so, the men have a responsibility not to be tempted by, or, the like, not to, like, like, to be, like, spiritually sound enough or mature enough not to be, like, to, like, try not to be swayed by it. That is true. So I Hmm. I think, honestly, I think that is a little bit of a double standard just in 
Christian circles in general, but yeah. Yes. Although, and just back to the story of the episode. So Mr. Barkley yelling in the middle of the ski lodge will always be a favorite funny moment to me. <laughs> no! Don't say it. <laughs> I know. I just, like, it, that would have been a great visual joke just everyone looking at him, but... Uh, so yeah. I do appreciate one, the guy, the ski instructor doesn't lead Donna on, it's just an innocent childhood crush. The weird thing is, the ski instructor is voiced by the dude who wrote the episode. Yeah, that is pretty weird. <laughs> I don't remember what show it was, but there was an animated kid show where the writer had one of the, like, kindergarten age characters have a crush on an older teacher and designed the character after himself. I don't remember. What show was that? We don't gotta go into it, but that is weird. I think it was the rebooted Powerpuff Girls, because I remember that anytime that show, like, moved one step to the left or right, people got really mad, but, um... Um, I'll say this, just out of my own curiosity, I googled Mother, Son, Adventures and Odyssey episodes. A model child came up, which is about a mother and daughter. No, yes. a member of the family came up, which I guess does have that relationship also, but it's not really about the, the, the son growing up. Right. Which goes to the thing, even like, you know, the new family, which the army family, who I always forget the name of. It's not the even Perkins. like I, I, the per the Perkins. It's, it's not even like the mother and son have like that, that close of our like, like dynamic. Absolutely. And, like, the two examples I can think of of a really, like, strong mother-son dynamic is, like, between, like, like, when the the father's gone, and that's a lot of the dynamic. That's a good point. But hmm. I don't know. I, just to bring that up, yeah. if people bring it up, but I, right. I'm talking more about, like, the son growing up sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, and, like, y this is also an episode where you have to balance, you know, this is a schoolgirl crush Donna has on this guy. The girlfriend shows up and she deflates. And is it okay for George to say, well, Donna, it's just part of growing up. You'll have crushes on plenty of guys who won't like you. It's a little weird. I mean, I guess that makes it a little more applicable towards like the kids. And it's then it's clearly not like he was too old for you. Like, it's clearly not him being like salty. Like they want it to be like he needs to be there for his daughter. But yeah, the episode does also end on this note of don't worry, dad, the girl will get o your daughter will get over that crush quickly. But, you know, who knows? Yeah, it's like, well, maybe. So, just wanted to point that out. Okay, moving on. Ice fishing. Tom, Wit, Eugene, and Monty go ice fishing. Monty worries about living up to his sister's example. I... I it's interesting, because this, like, predates a lot of those episodes where, like, Eugene's, like, one-upped by, like, Bernard. It's kind of fun to see, like... Jack, uh, to see uh, Tom and like Tom be upstaged by Eugene. It, it is interesting how they do the foibles because, uh, or like the relationships. I don't think fo foibles is the foils. There. Foils. Like Eugene almost like seems to best Tom, but Bernard bests Eugene. Yes, I would agree with that. You know, uh, I think this is a funny episode. It feels like not a lot happens in it, in fairness. It is a very chill camping episode. I I guess there is part of me that wishes, and this is in the subtext of it, that we had really seen more of Monty's inferiority complex with his sister. Yeah. There's an uneasiness growing within today's parents. Questions arise around what our kids are being taught, exposed to, and influenced by. Thankfully... A fully engaged, well-informed parent is a powerful thing. And that's why I support Answers in Genesis, and I would recommend you do as well. Because it's important to remember that the battle for our kids' minds isn't one in the courts or the classrooms. It's one from the safety and comfort of our own home. So be the difference our kids need and visit www.answers.gift today. At the Home Depot, we have the tools for you to give the gift of a smarter home with savings on top brands like the Google Hub, 
a command center for your smart devices that raises the IQ of your entire home. Or the Nest Learning Thermostat that helps you conserve energy and save on your bill. And if you don't know what to get, gift cards are a smart gift no matter what they get. So this year, gift smarter with savings on tools to make your holiday magic. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. The Christmas countdown's on at JCPenney. Through Saturday, use your coupon and dash away with very merry savings on last-minute gifts across the store. Like fine jewelry stocking stuffers up to 70% off after coupon. And save up to 50% on comfy, stylish outerwear for the whole fam. Add curbside pickup to make your trip extra quick. We got your holiday. JCPenney. Offers good on select items through 1224. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. I feel like um I feel like if this was a modern Odyssey episode, not in a bad way, it would have started that they're on their way and you would have gone like the like to the ice fishing and you would have gotten like just like the backstory, like, oh, were you upset about the train? And it's like I don't want to talk about the train and then later like it it gets talked about. Yes. I and I agree. think that could have helped because it would have jumped into the the story a little bit quicker because it does feel like we spend like, you know, five to eight minutes on them, like it, it establishing like, right, how Monty feels inferior. Yeah, so. Uh, and ugh, Sorry, tripped over my words there. Yes, and I, I was actually just going to say, so the first episode of The Grandkids is a Jenny episode. The second one's a Monty episode. I kind of wish this third one had been a Monty and Jenny episode. I do, too. I think that would have been better. So, just a thought, but it, it's nothing bad. I, I've never been ice fishing, so I can't speak to the experience. But I also have always been curious, so the witches let kids build train cars? Do they have model kits? Do they just get to paint them? Right. that it, It's interesting because that was, like, such a big thing early on. And I don't know if, like, the people, like, I mean, I guess it was a hobby. Like, it's probably, like, building, like, right? Or painting or, like, something. You're right. What I would also point out is everyone's so repulsed by how bad Monty's train car looks. How bad can it be if he spent a week working on it? Yeah. That's what I want to know. And how bad can it be that they can't lie or they can't say like, how you like talk about like the good aspects of it. I don't know if it's just like in comparison to the sisters. Maybe. But like that every character is like, like yeah, exactly. Like, so like that. It's so gross. Who knows? But yeah, right. Did you do? I did think the ending was really funny that Eugene makes a good point. So many people have caught that old Grundy by this point. He'd be unedible. But at the same time, who, why has no one been able to catch him until Eugene? Well, because he's using this technology to, like, locate him and find, oh. like, the best spot. That's true. I think the Eugene stuff's funny. Yes. I mean, it's funny because you see Tom being like, ah, oh, Eugene's not going to have no idea how to actually fish. And then, like, he just totally gets one up. It's an enjoyable episode. If not, like, I think it's most stuck in my mind because the cover of the version we had of this album was an image from On Thin Ice. Yes, yes, it was. And so... It's one of those things where it feels a little bit like, oh, okay. Like, this episode stuck in my mind for that reason. That makes perfect sense. And moving on to Scattered Seeds, Connie directs one of Wit's plays called The Sower and the Seeds. But when her cast starts abandoning her, she has to find ways to deal with it. I think this is a good one in the category of, like, kind of the modern versions of parables. Yes. Like, I think it does it well. I mean, I think... I think it's a little funny. It's a little on the nose that she's doing the parable of the sower as the seeds as the play. And it, the exact same thing happens to her. But I think the context of it's good for a kid to understand. Because I think it's a parable that as a kid, you're like, what does this mean? I would agree. Like, you can be explained to it, but this is, like, a stronger, like, idea of how to, like, actually, like, remember it and, like, how it could actually, like, 
be more like physically visible. I would agree. I would also say, why are Connie, uh, why are Monty, Monty and Jenny in this play if they're just visiting? You know, the girl in the in the orchestra episode was like, because it's Wit's grandchildren. But I gotta say, <laughs> yes, and more Lucy and gets more a, likely, and Lucy gets a small part. <laughs> I know. I know it's supposed it, to be a message it, about being faithful, but. There is no small parts, only small actors. Well, yeah, but... Not when I wrote this part, Lucy. <laughs> Which is a hilarious joke, but it's pretty funny. Two contacts. Yes, yeah, oh, sorry about that. Uh, yes, it is. Like, it's a so, hilarious joke, but, like, how small could it be? Is it, like, no lines and you just, like, run out, like, just stand there doing nothing? Like, I don't know what could the part be that would justify that. I know, they just wanted it to make it seem like Lucy is great, but... So, in terms of how everybody leaves, Eugene leaves because he's too busy with the computer department, which... I mean, I don't know if we should really blame Eugene for that, if he's the only one who can fix things and he doesn't have a backup. I guess the idea was it's it, it's it's his computer club, but I'm like it, 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 Eugene's relationship with with the college is always fishy. Is he a student there? Does he work there? It's always I'm always kind of like, what is Eugene's current like situation with his with Campbell County Community College? Then Jenny leaves because she's too much of a perfectionist, and Monty just kind of leaves with Jenny now. The one thing I would say is if they're visiting, yeah, they probably wouldn't have been in the play anyway, unless it was a, like a two-week rehearsal. Uh, right, I wonder if this is, I mean, this is like kids' theater, right? Yes. So, like, presumably this may be like a week. This might be the week the Barclays are gone on their ski vacation. Oh, that's true. Now, this and they're is... they're just like, they're just like, let's do it. Hmm. Didn't think about that, but you're definitely right. Now, there is one very important first in this episode. What? The legendary first appearance of Eugene's ukulele. It's pretty good. Pretty pretty classic Odyssey element right there. Yes. Which we'll talk about those Eugene Sings albums when we get to them. Wait, is there more than one album? There was a Christmas one as well, so I don't know if they were planning to do more, or they just didn't sell well, or they were only ever going to do the two. I don't know if one would 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 have assumed that Eugene Zings would have been a smash box office hit. Hmm. Like, would it have, like, I mean, we'll get to Eugene Zings when we get to it, but it's not like it's a bunch of really good, like, gospel songs. Now that would be funny. There's no well, God like that, Jehovah. Maybe they... There's no God like Jehovah. Well, no, because at least then that may have sold because they could sell it, sell it to like, um, like youth groups or like kids, like Sunday schools or something, and like played it. But we got, we can't talk about that right now. On with the episode. Yes, I think that's about it. It's a good episode. The the moral's good. It's the last time we see with grandkids, which I guess I wish they didn't need to have like a big send off episode. But the fact that they were here for so long, you know, maybe we could have just like had a scene where Wit said, "I just dropped them off at the airport," and Monty disappeared for twenty five years. I still hope they come back at some point. I think you maybe will get Monty coming back. I somewhat doubt you're going to get, um... Oh, no, no. Jillian. Here's what's... Here's how it's going to go. Jillian and Burke break up. Jillian and Jason still don't date. Then Jillian just says, Jason, I met this dude in the field, and we're dating now. Monty! <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> they're like... They're like, Jillian's getting with some Whitaker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. All right. Two more episodes to go. The Treasure of Le Monde. When Wit, Robin, and Connie come across a dusty old pipe organ in the attic, the three set off to solve the mystery of the Treasure of Le Monde. This is an impressively good single part episode. Yes. 
a lot happens. It feels like a complete little adventure, like mystery sort of thing. Oh yeah. I think the whole the whole like play a deaf cabbage is like a fun little right. That feels like I, I don't mean this in a bad way, like an escape room puzzle or a an adventure game puzzle. Yeah, like it, it really does. It feels like. Oh, like, yeah, what do you do here? And then it opens this, like, like, and then, like, the telescope. Yes. No, it's a very well-thought-out mystery. I feel like they also did a video where the treasure was the Bible, but that's not important. I like the bad guy in the sense that when he's introduced, you don't necessarily expect or suspect him of turning. They... Yeah, it is true. They do a good job of, of like, kind of subverting that. I, the Bible, I think, isn't that the ending to one of the video games? I think one of the video no, games, not, too. Well, no, is that the ending to Sword in the Stone? I think so, yes. Yeah, in the Stone, the Sword of the Spirit. Or is it that he gets the Sword of the Spirit? I can't remember. I think the green thing is funny, though. Yes. Again, a very good visual joke I wish we could have seen. Mm-hmm. I'll, it actually may be a cartoon. I will say, though, 100% one of them ends with, like, with, with like, the Bible. Because I do have a visual reminder of, like, one of the characters having the Bible. Right. I mean, like, our greatest treasure. And I can't remember if that's from a game or or a episode, or, like, a, a video or both. Yeah. Maybe we'll Twitch stream these games one day just for fun. Yeah. I think it'd be easier. I remember them being brutal when I was a kid, but I feel like now I'm more competent. That's very possible. It's all that Fortnite and other Fortnite and Returnal practice. Exactly. So this is also the first episode to mention what used to to be the site of a church. Yeah, you're right. Not a huge deal, but I do feel like it's something that comes into play a lot as we go along. You know, it's never, like, involved in any of the big mysteries or anything, but... Although you I do... Like the... oh, go Sorry. ahead. It was I about like the... the... Here's the... Th- Please just go. Now you go. I was going to say, the mechanics of... There's this room that clearly has a window in it that Wit never found. Like, I would yeah, be curious, I... like, where's the window? I was going to say, I'm going to have a similar thought is that it doesn't really make sense that there's all these secret little tunnels and places. One, I get, like, Witsend's older, so they, there may not have been, like, like firm blueprints. But the idea, especially because, like, the look of Odyssey, like, the Witsend has changed so much. The idea that the, it was, like, a church, and then, like, there were no renovations. I mean, there had to have been renovations, but that, like, it doesn't just look like, oh, that's a church. I would agree with that. Because then I feel like when they had re- redone it, wouldn't they have found this secret room? Like, did they just do the outside and they're like, hey, there's a secret room in here? Because, like, it doesn't look like a church, but then you have it being, like, the... the recreation uh, center. Rec- cent- the recreation center. And, like, you'd assume if they made it on the outside not to look like a recreation center, they'd be like, hey, what's this room? Well, remember, the church burned down and they built around the part that stayed up. So I guess the theory is there was, like, a center little column in Wit's End that this room, which could be high up, like, survived. Right. Sometime. Or is the idea that it came later? Like, it, like, he hit it after. Well, Wit says in the episode, the sanctuary burnt down, but the tower stayed up. Everybody liked it so much, they decided to build the rec center around it. So I would not be surprised if, yeah, it somehow managed to stay in there that whole time. Yeah, and I guess, I guess you're right. I guess in the Underground Railroad episode, they talk about how, like, the pastor had a house. Yes. And the church burned down, and it's like, kind of connected it's a little confusing maybe that'll be a good expl- exploration for the odyssey live action show i'm pitching to focus on the family next week they don't chase me off the lawn get off why are you even here we're not interested in doing live action odyssey they keep saying a tv show's in the works i'm saying it could be the next chosen 
I don't even know where you, I guess you put it on the app, right? Yes, probably. But I feel like that would, that would be the worst way to garner more Odyssey fans. Or we, or we, we have put it on, on an, put it on TBN. That, I mean, that'd be interesting. You we, have to put on like Netflix or something. Uh, Disney Plus. There we go. Now put it on TBN right next to the new Veggie Tales that Phil Fisher is no longer doing. Oh, did he get kicked off again or decide yeah. not to do it? No, he got fired and they changed the voices. Ugh. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, we've got one more episode, and that one more episode is front page news. In an attempt to get out of gym class, Kurt and Oscar joined the Odyssey Owl, but lack but their lack of experience causes problems. I mean funny episode. Yes. I get it's like a fun, like misadventure, like yeah, gym class. I have to get from like children's television from before I was born, or like this clear like adults are writing it from their experiences from like the nineties or early two thousands. The gym class must have been way worse. I don't disagree. Like, like that is like gym class is so awful, and it's like I guess like running laps is is not great. But I am also like, could, like, was it like this torturous? Like, people talk about it. And it feels like people are like, this is the worst thing in the world. Yes. It also surprises me the school has groups that meet during gym class. I mean, you'd think more people would be trying this. Maybe that's why the teacher is so. Yeah, suspicious. it's like gym's like the generic elective or something. Yeah. Hmm. I also feel like it's weird. They're right. They're being so like, oh, we're trying to crack down on kids getting out of gym class. But it's like if kids want to learn how to do this, like they're like, it's like a whole weird setup. Like it's a weird setup that's during gym class. Right. First off, and then it's like we want to discourage people from doing this when they like really are just trying to get out of gym class. But it's like, well, if if they want to learn how to do it, even if it's they also want to get out of gym class, like they're like, you have to be reporters. And like I hate to say it, like the whole thing with the tape recorder, you could go to probably the teacher and be like, We're really sorry, but like th- the tape recorder didn't like work. Or, like, the tape didn't work, or, like, we for, like there was a little issue there. And I agree with that, and I get that's probably kid, they don't think about that kind of logic, but yeah, I do agree. I do find it surprising, the teacher finds the art, and I know this is supposed to be for a joke, the teacher finds this crazy article believable until we get to the duck noises and collection of sweat socks. And like, as soon as <laughs> Lucy rewrites the article and that's in there, she'll know. Right. And, like, that's not that unrealistic. Like, duck noises and, like, a... I guess sweat socks is a little weird. Right. I mean, it's a gym teacher, too. I mean, it feels... I don't know. Like, it it feels... Like, I guess the, the, you know, the theme is supposed to be... Well, on on the wiki, it says it's responsibility... But I guess it's trying not to, like, get out of the things you're supposed to do. But, like, yeah. the idea that, like, they were trying to do something else. It's not like someone, they like, pretended to be injured. That is correct. And got out of it. And it's also always weird, too, when they do stuff like, this is, like, I guess it's somewhat, like, a fate. Like, you want to hold to, like, what you're, like, you know, you have, like, things you're held to. But it's also weird because it's like, is is not is wanting to get out of gym class a moral failing? I don't think so. Like, that's what I think about. It's like, yeah, I mean, they probably shouldn't be doing this solely to get out of it. But they actually seem to genuinely like interviewing the guy. That is true. Like, they seem to be having a pretty decent time. I think they also said, like, I there were things to say, like, maybe they were like, they were like oh, we're just doing this. But like, you know. Oh, definitely. Huh. But it yeah. is always funny where it's like, here's the here's the plot, and it's like, is this really like a sin? Like, like it doesn't have to be a sin, but it's like, mm. more notably, and this is another thing with another gym episode. This episode was released in January. It sounds like they're having gym outside. Maybe that's why they wanted to get out. They're freezing us. 
That's very possible. But I think, do you have anything else to say about this episode? Not really. All right, I guess that wraps it up. Join us next time for a few more episodes, and then for the next episode of Album 74, Buckle Up, which maybe there'll be some Jules and Buck cannon fodder. I don't know. But anyway, I'm Will. I'm John. We'll see you next time. We conquer cancer. For the mom-to-be who is out of treatment options. For the doctor who has a brilliant idea but needs research funding. For the people who faced cancer head-on and climbed incredible heights while they were with us. For the children who celebrate the end of chemo. We conquer cancer for all who have been touched by it. Conquer Cancer accelerates breakthroughs in research and care for every cancer, every patient, everywhere. Join us at conquer.org.